Thank you. Right, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin. I work for Facebook uh, in the data infrastructure team. And today, I'd like to give you an overview of one of the exciting projects we've been working on for the past uh, year or so. Um, so Ravi talked about, in his talk, uh, about the, uh, th this philosophy we have at Facebook. Uh, we uh, we're trying to move fast. Uh, if you combine that with the fact that we try to make all our uh, decisions based on actual data, the result is that there's a huge need for being able to run queries, run, uh, do, uh, do data analysis and run queries uh, that produce results very quickly. So historically, uh, our data scientists and analysts have relied on Hive for the kind of uh, data analysis. The problem with Hive is that it's designed for batch processing. Uh, <laughs> So it's not really a, a good fit for uh, these kinds of low latency ad hoc uh, queries that they want to be able to do. Uh, at Facebook, we have other tools that uh, are faster than Hive, but they are either too limited in functionality or they are simply not designed to be able to operate against our uh, huge uh, warehouse. So over the past few months, we've been working on Presto and uh, to fill, basically to fill this gap. Uh, in a nutshell, Presto is a distributed query engine optimized for ad hoc analytics at interactive speeds. Um, and here, we're, the idea is uh, to be able to run queries uh, that take in the order of a few hundred milliseconds for very simple queries, or, uh, all the way up to a couple of minutes uh, or a few minutes for more complex queries. Uh, Presto supports standard ANSI SQL, and right now it understands all the basic things you would expect from a, a SQL engine, including aggregations, uh, uh, some limited types of joins, and some, a few more advanced uh, features like analytic window functions. So let's talk a bit about, oh, uh, actually this may, may sound uh, obvious to everyone, but uh, we, we built Presto from the ground up to be able to deal with Facebook scale. This means it can handle, out the door it can handle um, all the 250 petabytes uh, of data we have in our data warehouse. Uh, which is running uh, thousands of machines across multiple geographical regions. Um, so let's take a, take a look at a bit. Uh, take a look at the architecture uh, specifically. Let's uh, focus on looking at what a query uh, does as it flows through the system. So we start with a client. It sends a query to a coordinator. Uh, the coordinator. Uh, takes the query, parses it, analyzes it, and produces a, a distributed execution plan. Then uh, it schedules uh, work in a bunch of machines that are part of the cluster. Uh, it tries to make sure that the work is, uh, happens as close as possible to where the data lives. A typical plan uh, requires at least two or more stages, depending on the complexity of the query. Um, so part of the job of the scheduler is to uh, wire all these stages together. And also a query usually has a, a, an output stage that uh, tends to, is the one that does all the final aggregations or grouping before the data is sent over to the client. So in a normal execution, once everything's wired up, the client starts pulling data from the output stage, which in turn uh, pull data from the underlying stages and so on. So, in building uh, Presto, we made a bunch of design decisions that make Presto a better fit for interactive queries compared to a batch system like uh, Hive and MapReduce. Uh, so just to give you a bit of context, uh, in order to execute a query, Hive turns the SQL into a set of MapReduce jobs that run one after another. Uh, so in, in, in MapReduce, each, each, of the each of the steps runs, uh, has to run to completion before the next step uh, starts. So all the mappers run, then once they are done, all the reusers can start, and then all the mappers from the next job can start, and so on. And then at, at every stage, uh, step of the way, uh, MapReduce stores all the intermediate data to disk uh, to be able to recover. MapReduce is designed for fault tolerance, so it has to be able to recover if anything goes wrong, and it relies on that intermediate data. Uh, with Presto, uh, we don't use MapReduce. Instead, we built a special purpose uh, query execution engine that uses higher level operators and is aware of the semantics of SQL. So that gives us a bit more freedom on the kinds of optimizations we can do and allows us to do better decisions in terms of 
when and where to execute things uh, and the kinds of uh, things we need to do. Uh, second point is that Presto never stores intermediate results to disk. Uh, once the data is loaded from the source, it gets processed, buffered in memory if necessary, and then forwarded on to the next worker in the, in the pipeline. Uh, so by avoiding all this uh, unnecessary I.O., we can reduce latency. And then finally, uh, one of the things that Presto can do that MapReduce doesn't do, I mean, MapReduce runs stage by stage, one after another. Presto can start all the stages at once, and it can stream uh, uh, data through all the stages, so they can all run concurrently. This uh, type of pipeline allows uh, for lower latency for a huge number of queries that uh, can take advantage of it. So in terms of implementation, uh, it's implemented, Presto is implemented entirely in Java, and it gets its speed uh, from a, a, a couple of techniques that, that we apply. So first of all, we generate uh, direct JVM bytecode uh, for certain portions of the, query, of the query plan. Basically, we take the inner loops and compile them directly to, to bytecode. This allows the VM, the JVM, to uh, better optimize the code specific for that query, and, and you can generate native machine code for that. Uh, the second thing is we avoid many of the issues that poorly written Java programs run into, uh, like memory management problems, like uh, issues with allocating and, and garbage collection. Uh, our engine is designed to work on very efficient flat memory data structures, so we basically don't have to deal with garbage in the uh, core uh, inner loop of the execution. So if, in fact, if you look at any of our servers, uh, there's almost no, almost no GC activity. Another important architectural point I, I, I want to talk about is that we design Presto to be extensible. And this is not just uh, in terms of uh, allowing people to write their own custom functions, pretty much like uh, you can do with Hive, but it's also about being able to integrate with uh, other external systems. I mean, the reality is at Facebook, we have a lot of data in our data warehouse, but there's also a lot of data spread across many other systems. So being able to query the data through a single interface uh, is useful and, and, and being able to join it and analyze it together. Um, so in order to integrate with a, uh, another system, Presto uh, has a concept of plugins. So all a plugin needs to be able to do is uh, provide implementation for the three APIs that are shown the, on the diagram there. The metadata API uh, provides information about tables, uh, columns, and types. The data location API provides information about the physical location of the blocks or chunks of data that make up a given table. And the data stream API is responsible for fetching the data from that external data source and tur turning it into the format that the Presto query engine needs to be able to execute. So as long as you have uh, a plugin that implements these APIs, uh, Presto can run queries over those external systems. So our main integration point today is uh, against Hive. Uh, we have a plugin that can, that, that can talk to uh, the open source version of Hive, and we have another version that can talk to our internal version of Hive with uh, namespace extensions. We also have plugins for querying uh, Scribe, so you can query over a, a stream of data coming from Scribe. We can query Puma, and even some, uh, some of the internal uh, metadata and state of the Presto engine itself, Presto server itself, is exposed as, uh, uh, via another plugin. So you can even run queries over the set of running queries or set of running tasks in the server. You can look at the stats, et cetera. So we started working on Presto in August last year. We had our first version running in production by the beginning of this year. And we've seen uh, tremendous growth in terms of the number of uh, people using it over the past few months. At this point, we have over 850 people in the company using it every day. Uh, they run uh, over 27,000 uh, queries and scan more than 320 terabytes of data every single day. The system is deployed on, uh, across three uh, geographical locations. And we've uh, successfully been able to scale the, uh, the each a single, a single uh, individual cluster up to 1,000 nodes. In terms of performance, uh, we're seeing some, uh, these are some, some uh, rough numbers that we're seeing for simple queries. Uh, so we're seeing an improvement in CPU efficiency of four to seven times compared to Hive and a reaction in latency of eight to 10 times. 
Um, there's a couple areas where we think uh, we, we can make a huge uh, improvement in performance, though. I mean, those numbers are nice, but we can go even further. So one interesting observation is that uh, when people are trying to explore data, uh, get a sense of what the major trends are, get some insight on, uh, rough insight on the data, uh, they're generally okay with um, getting approximate results for their queries as long as they can get a uh, good sense of what the error bounds are for those queries. Um, there's some research from the Blink DB team at, um, at Berkeley on how to run arbitrary queries using uh, that produce these kinds of results. So we, uh, th and, and those te techniques rely on being able to create and maintain carefully selected samples of the data based on observing the uh, queries that people are running on the system. Uh, so we've been working with uh, one of the authors of the BlinkDB um, project to integrate these features directly into the core of the uh, of Presto. And by scanning, I mean, by, by being able to run uh, the queries over as much more uh, uh, samples of, of the original data set, we can see improvements of uh, one or two orders of magnitude for typical queries. There's another area where we think we can improve performance significantly. If you take a look at typical query uh, in Presto, 60% or, or higher uh, of the time is spent reading, decoding, and transforming the data from HDFS into the internal in-memory format that Presto needs to be able to operate. So we're working on a native storage engine designed to, uh, uh, for, the, for the way the Presto, uh, the query, uh, the Presto query engine uh, needs to operate uh, to access and, and process the data such that the on-disk layout, the encodings, et cetera, closely match the, uh, the way that Presto expects to see the data. So the idea is we can take very hot data from other systems like Hive and import them into, into Presto. And, uh, and then the engine can, at runtime, realize that if you're running a query over the Hive data, you can realize that you, are, you already has a copy of the data in this optimized format, and it can uh, swap the data source and basically accelerate the query execution. And this store, uh, this technique, and this store is actually actually fits uh, goes hand in hand with uh, the approximate feature uh, query feature I just talked about uh, in terms of being able to. We need somewhere to store the sample, so we're we're using this uh, uh, native store. We need the uh, the logic for for detecting what are the patterns of queries and and figuring out which sets to imp data sets to import. All this uh, kind of integrates with this uh, this uh, store. So our goal for the next few months is to, uh, we're gonna work on two couple areas. One is we're gonna continue to make performance improvements and we, we need to finish uh, some uh, high level features that we haven't uh, yet implemented. Uh, and the goal is to be able to take all the actual uh, query execution that happens today uh, on Hive and uh, move it over to, uh, to Presto. And when we started Presto, uh, we we uh, started developing with the intent of open sourcing it. We do all, all our development in a private GitHub repo. Uh, Presto doesn't have any dependencies on internal uh, Facebook infrastructure other than through plugins that are uh, optional. So uh, our goal is to open source uh, the code some, sometime in the fall. So with this, I'll hand it off to Avery, who's gonna talk about iterative graph processing at scale. Thank you.